I was told to be careful what I wish for. Hello, I'm Ryan, and welcome to Ball in Europe's first ever Ask Me Anything. If this goes well, if you enjoy it, we'll definitely open the floor for more videos like this, questions, etc. Don't worry, we won't bombard you with these, but we'll hopefully do a few more. But uh, yeah, it's quite simple. You sent me in some questions across different platforms, and I'm going to answer them now. But before I get to that, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It really, really, really helps the channel. Um, I'm sure there's a button there somewhere. But listen, let's get to the first question. So yeah, this was really just asking who I was on Reddit, but uh, the short version is, hi, I'm Emmett. I run Ball in Europe. I have done since 2013. I'm also a commentator across multiple sports, but the one you care about is basketball, and I am a regular voice on the Basketball Champions League commentary. I also am an analyst in Irish, as in speaking Osgwelga, our language, for the National Irish Language Broadcaster here, TG Carr. So that's across the Irish uh, major finals, and of course, all the Irish internationals. And I just love writing and talking and watching basketball. Uh, you know, it's just great. And that's, that's who I am. This is going to be a fudge of an answer in that I don't have a favourite one. I really, for me, it's a case of so long as teams are cool to watch, I want to watch them. So that's the big thing for me. I, I don't support a team. I, I'm in Ireland. Like the, if, if, you know, if you follow me on any other platform, you'll know that, or even watch previous videos, you'll know that when it comes to support, my primary love is UCD soccer, uh, the football team there, which uh, leads to me football is pain and my football is life related tweets. So no, I don't follow any particular EuroLeague team. In fact, the big goal of Ball in Europe is that we are the balanced source. You know that we don't have a rooting interest. And I hope uh, that answers the question well enough. So Moshe has asked a few questions, and uh, the short version here is that I would like to play in the early media game this year. I played in the early media game many years ago in Berlin in 2016, I believe it was. I'm sure Moshe can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And I wasn't very good, and I was also quite unfit. I am less fit now. I would like to get very fit, but I also know that shooting won't be a factor for me. You know, my eyesight's too bad, and even before I had bad eyesight, my shooting wasn't good. So it's all about cardio for me, being able to be a useful presence on the defensive end in the media game when it's journalist versus journalist on a big uh, you know, floor, Big coaches, empty arena, thankfully, for the most part, apart from our friends. So, yeah, that's the goal. And I'm going to hopefully document that journey as we go through the season. Yeah, this is obviously a big thing close to my heart. And the short version is more professional, great coaching. Obviously, we've improved an awful lot in that respect. Keep improving there and develop more talented players. That involves getting more players through, more players playing at a high level, playing against comp higher competition, and hopefully more players going pro. Because the more players Ireland has, both men and women, playing regular basketball against a better quality competition week in, week out, the better it will be for the national teams long term. And obviously that's going to require investment, it's going to require, require time. But I think uh, for both the men and women, I believe it's very, very doable. So Dermot runs an academy and he was asking this very long-winded uh, question, which was somewhat, you know, emotional, shall we say, opinionated and opinionated. But essentially his question was about how what academies like his, uh, NABA, can do uh, to be, you know, to get more support really from national federations. And I think this goes beyond uh, just Dermot's academy. I think all academies really, which have good coaches and good history and are putting players into higher levels of basketball, the obviously there's competing interests in that academies are designed to create jobs to give people you know to create money make money you know stuff like that and whereas uh, the purpose of a federation is purely to improve and increase the participation rates of basketball in that federation's territory essentially to me the obvious area is cooperation um so that is for people running an academy having some level of, you know, I say accreditation, but really recognition from federations can help them show that, listen, we are legit and all that. Uh, accreditation is a bit iffy in terms of getting that through, but uh, obviously there are forms of accreditation there. Federation by federation, people are going to go, well, 
but more some sort of acknowledgement level and for the uh, federations really to find ways that they can help with you know the academies be with their vision for what they want to see coming through in terms of development of players from their nation so to me cooperation is always a good thing in basketball so this is key in that Niall has said any arena in the modern EuroLeague era doesn't count. And I've got four for you, Niall. Uh, so I'm going to go in reverse order. Uh, I will go first off Antwerp, uh, the big arena there. I was there for BCL Final Four. I think it's a great arena. And I think it would be a fine EuroLeague Final Four venue. Third, it's a big arena. It's the Stade Pierre de Moroy in Lille. Of course, I was there for Eurobasket in 2015. It hosted uh, the front half of the Olympic basketball this past summer. And I think, you know, if they could fill that up, it'd be phenomenal. The second biggest choice I'd go for is the new Valencia Stadium Arena. I think it's going to be great. And I think there will be a Final Four there. I'll be very surprised if there isn't a Final Four there within a couple of years, to be honest. I think that's pretty much a lock. But the big one uh, is the Stadio, Berna, Stadio Bernabeu, Bernabeu, the Bernabeu in Madrid. I think if, you know, obviously you want a few things to go right. You want Real to qualify, hopefully, that year. You want at least one team that's known for bringing absolute crazy numbers to also qualify. And you got to sell it like crazy. To, you want to fill that out for two nights. Uh, I think it would be an incredible moment in European basketball if you really could do that. So there are my choices from four through to one. Moshe's back. So yeah, I used to regularly do the Sweet 16 podcast with Moshe, Lewis Cameron, and of course the great Aris Barkas. I'm not saying the usual lads aren't great, but like, you know, a lot of you have heard of Aris. A uh, few of you have heard of me, Lewis, and Moshe, but we're all great too, trust me. Uh, so yeah, and frankly, scheduling is a challenge. If I do go into basketball podcast on a regular basis, it'll be basically me doing episodic stuff one-on-one -on -one with other people uh, where I can record them in batches, and um, uh, but also around my own schedule. But uh, I am looking forward to once again doing the live shows this coming Final Four, wherever it may be, with Moshe, Aris, and hopefully Lewis as well. And uh, yeah, it's, I really enjoyed the experience I did with the guys the first time around, and I really enjoy that we still get to do the live shows. So that's all you get out of me from that one, Moshe. He will be back again. Don't worry, folks. So I'm going to leave out the super contenders in EuroLeague. I'm going to do the EuroLeague competitions first, and then two FIBA ones. So in EuroLeague, you know who the big teams are. So below the super elite... I would say FS are interesting to watch this year because of the arrival of Poirier, that dimension, but also they aren't that deep by contender standards. Uh, so that makes them interesting. Both Belgrade clubs won the atmosphere alone, but also they've had huge roster overhauls. Partizan more than Zvezda, but Zvezda still had a significant overhaul. I think they both make for very interesting stories to watch this year. And at the bottom of the table, I would go Paris. I picked them to come second last this season. But like it's their first time in EuroLeague. They're a relatively young uh, project of a club. And of course, Thiago Splitter's first ever head coaching job. So that's them for me. Euro Cup, it's a bit more predictable in terms of who I'd say to watch. Hapel, Tel Aviv, obviously because of the crazy roster they put together. Valencia, because they're probably the favorites overall. And Jova to Badalona, because I think they're an interesting team to watch this year. I think they could be really fun. I don't think they're going to win it, but I think they could be well worth watching. BCL, Unicaja, I think it's them and Tenerife are the two favorites yet again. Lower down, I'd go Niners Chemnitz, Phoebe Europe Cup champions, of course. And I think they could be very interesting. And lower-ish down, I suppose, uh, Falco from uh, Hungary, because I just love how seriously their fans take every game. That's always cool. And Benfica from Portugal, because you don't think of you know Portugal and basketball too much. So that's just kind of cool. Lastly, the FIBA Europe Cup, uh, I'm going to say Anvil, because they won it two years ago, but that was before the FIBA Europe Cup champion automatically got a basketball Champions League spot. And I just love that there's a team called Anvil. Uh, so they're the teams to watch. Last appearance of Mr. Barda on these questions. And the answer is uh, yes, but I'll be honest, top of my head, like, because it just mostly involves us going out drinking a lot. So uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments and I might tell some of the Final Four stories in the future. Uh, like, pick a Final Four. Uh, I missed the three before uh, the most recent Berlin one uh, because of COVID stuff and also personal stuff. But I've been to all the other ones since 2013 onwards. So fire in your questions, pick a Final Four, and I'll answer those in the comments. First off, sorry I have to edit your name. YouTube would demonetize me. Sorry, that's just bad, I know. People can guess what your name is anyway. Uh, so short version is, yeah, right now that is pretty bad. Because uh, basically it's just teams like, you know, throwing money 
and not really getting a return. And I think for long-term sustainability, you want European basketball to be capable of generating money. I believe that there is a way for pro basketball at the highest level in Europe to be profitable, just to be clear. Like, not just sustainable. I mean, I think it can make money. I believe that it needs a lot more investment uh, in terms of marketing, a lot more focus on sort of, you know, how you build up sponsorship and uh, TV right related revenue. And I think that going to, all of that is going to require, and I've said it before, other parts, other answers here, a lot more cooperation. Because I think right now everyone's just so focused on survival and winning that they aren't thinking about growth and that this could actually be a revenue generator. And until you have that, I think, you know, there's limitations is the short version. Uh, why I watch it, though, to be honest, is I love watching basketball and I find EuroLeague very exciting. And Yes, there's bad stuff. Uh, like I would love, obviously, because uh, you know that's a, this is a German person who asked, asked a question. I would love to see Alba be, uh, you know, bigger than they are. And I believe the product as a whole needs to grow uh, in order for that to happen. And uh, yeah, uh, so I love watching good basketball. That's why I watch Euroleague. So the last question, and I had a really big think about this, and so. I was originally going to just come out and say when Greece beat uh, USA in 2006, and then I realized, no, I don't want to do that. And that's because Jeff Taylor's commentary on that is sort of ingrained in my mind as part of that, because I didn't watch it when it was on. I, it was a couple of years later when I watched the full game for the first time. And, you know, I associate Jeff's voice with that game. So I kind of have to go for a game that I didn't hear the commentary on, which immediately me makes it a game I was at. And that for me, leads to a very easy choice. And that is the 2015 Eurobasket semi-final between France and Spain, because that was a phenomenal game. If you had written it, no one would have believed it. It would have been a terrible fictional script. In real life, of course, it was phenomenal. Uh, like, I've never seen a game where Pau Gasol was more important than a basketball court in my life. The, the emotions, the runs, everything about it. Uh, just, yeah, for me, that's the obvious pick. Uh, so sorry if this seemed a bit rushed. Uh, I had to record it twice because there was an issue with it, and I'm working to a tight schedule because I'm traveling to, uh, in the morning. But uh, thank you all for your questions, and I hope to do another one of these in the not-too-distant future, like firing questions you'd like to see in a future one now or whenever you want. And uh, videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I will see you soon.